Section 7.3, sizes of atoms and ions. So the size of an atom is going to be the distance from the middle of the nucleus to the outside of where the electron shield is. So um, it's a little bit different if, you're, if you have a single atom that's just sitting there that's not bound to anything, or if you have a, a bound atom. The bound atom is going to be half the distance between the nuclei. And so, however hard they pull in and however tight that they are, the bonding distance between those two would be half of that distance. The non-binding distance it would be the, the distance it would be if two molecules were to bump into each other and then for just a moment be touching, but not actually bi bonding to each other. The sizes change of atoms as you go down a group or across a row. Let's see if, if we can understand why. If you go from hydrogen to lithium to sodium, potassium, rubidium, as you go down the, the column of the periodic table, you have more and more shells of electrons. As you're going down, there's one more shell, one more shell, one more shell. These nested shells are increasing the size of that, of that atom, which makes sense. If you go across the periodic table, you have to remember what effective nuclear charge was. Remember, if I have, say, krypton right here, krypton, I've got one, two, three shells of electrons in between the uh, nucleus and the very last electron. And so those are, those are basically stealing away some of the pull that that, uh, that nucleus is having on it. But all of the electrons that are in the valent shell, the, first, the S's and the P's that are in the valent shell, don't shield each other because they're not in between that electron and the nucleus. So they are, you've got, every time you go across, you're adding another proton, 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 proton on the inside that's pulling, but yet the outer shell is not shielding very much. So since it's not shielding, but yet you have more an increasing number of, of positives, it's pulling in tighter, tighter, tighter. So as you go from the left to the right of the periodic table, the atom sizes get smaller because the nucleus is pulling in tighter, tighter, tighter. Now, if you steal an electron from, say, sodium, this example of sodium, sodium has 11 protons, 11 electrons, the first, two, the first shell, there's two electrons in the first shell. There's eight electrons in the second shell, so that's a total of ten. The third shell, since it's in group one, only has one. Well, if you steal that electron, you've stolen every electron in its shell since it only had one, and the shell goes away. Well, if the shell goes away, the size of the ion, if it's a positive, is smaller than the size of the neutral atom. Okay, it works exactly the opposite. Imagine that you are taking an electron to yourself. You're crowding more electrons in that are trying to get away from each other. And as such, that's going to get bigger. So if you become a cation, the, the, the size of that ion is going to be smaller than the neutral atom. If you become an anion, because it's trying to get away from the new electron, every, all the electrons hate each other, they are going to spread out a little bit to give it some room, and so the anion is going to be bigger than the neutral atom. So you can see here on the left, this is the neutral atom, lithium, and this is the ion, the cation, lithium cation. So the lithium cation has one less shell than the lithium neutral atom, and so it's, it's closer to the nucleus. And then you're going to see as you go down the periodic table, um, the difference between the size of the pull changes a little bit because of how that you're increasing the number of protons to pull, but yet you've, you've decreased the shell distance. And so there's a, even of a different, a different um, quantity as you go down the, 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 the group. Conversely, anions are larger because as you take an electron on yourself, those electrons are, are repelling each other, and so they, they try to spread out a little bit 
to to stay away from each other as best possible. So the the size of an anion gets bigger than the neutral atom um, that it used to be. So with anions at, or ions, cations or anions, if you as you go down the group, it's going to get bigger because you're increasing shells, more shells as you go further, and then um, as you go across, it's going to get smaller. The cations are going to get smaller due to effective nuclear charge. It's the same way here. These are going to get smaller as effective nuclear charge. But remember, fluorine and oxygen have the same uh, number of electrons as neon. So these are going to be bigger than the neons. And then these have the same as neons. And so these are going to be smaller than the neons. That's what an isoelectronic series is. All of these particular guys have the same number of electrons as neon does. Oxygen is two in front of neon, so it steals two uh, so that it can have the same number of electrons as neon. Fluorine is one ahead of neon, so it's going to steal one in order to have the same number of electrons as neon. Sodium gives away an electron to have the same number of electrons as neon. Magnesium gives away two. Aluminum gives away three. So since, since oxygen is in front of neon and getting bigger, this is going to be the biggest. If you see this is 1.26 angstroms, then it gets smaller down to fluorine because of, of nuclear effective nuclear charge. It's going to be pulling in tighter. So its, it's uh, size is 1.19 angstroms. Then you have neon. Under, then the next is neon is, is uh, the sodium. You can see that this is the neutral atom, this, this big one, but it's now it's smaller because it's lost a shell. It's smaller still. So oxygen is going to be the biggest. The, the one farthest to the top of the periodic table is going to be the, the highest if they all have the same. So the ionic size decreases with increasing nuclear charge.